Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. So we're going to have a look at where next week 10 days for today's second video. This is going to take us through the first week of May. We've got big uh, contrast coming up um, in the next few days. We're going to have some really cold and wet weather in the southeast on Monday. In fact, a little bit of snow can't be ruled out, would you believe, for the final day of April. Uh, on Monday, but by turning it through to Bank Holiday weekend, it does look as though uh, we may we, we may well be building in high pressure and bringing some warmer and drier conditions to uh, the British Isles. So, um, big contrast potentially coming up next week. Now, we're already released JMA Friday. That's our month head look ahead, and it's taking us into the final stages of May. The video is here on the homepage, and the hints are there, but after a bit of a dodgy start, we may actually have some uh, pretty nice weather coming up in May perhaps so uh, have a look at that and see what you think. Our third video uh, coming up this evening we'll be having a detailed look at the May Day uh, Bank Holiday Weekend. It's a fourth uh, May Day Bank Holiday Weekend update. This video will um, touch on the uh, May Day Bank Holiday Weekend as well because it's now within the uh, 7 to 10 day time frame um, but we'll look in detail at that period uh, tonight. So uh, two out of three videos uh, for you uh, right now. And then the third one comes up about 7 o'clock uh, this evening. So let's get on with it. We're going to start off having a look at rail picture because it's already pretty cold and wet uh, today across England and Wales. So this is the latest rail picture from uh, the weather outlook. Up in the north, it's a straightforward mix of sunshine and showers. But coming down across England and Wales... Cloud and persistent rain, and not only rain, it's also pretty cold as well. So if I overlay the temperatures, you can see that quite widely across England and Wales, those temperatures are struggling to get much into double figures. So a cold, wet day. As we've been anticipating for a while for today, to be fair, um, cold, wet day across many parts of the country. If you think that's bad, just wait and see what happens on Monday. This is the facts chart for midnight, uh, sunny to money from UK Met Office. This is the human interpretation of the models by the forecasters at the UK Met. And uh, look at this. We've got a very, very nasty area of low pressure indeed across northern parts of France at 900 and 91 millibars. The isobars are wrapped around that. Low pressure are pretty tight and they're coming in from an east to northeasterly direction. The air is actually originating, following the isobars back, the air is originating from like northern Scandinavia, so it's coming down in that direction. So it's a cold air mass that's wrapped around this area of low pressure. On its eastern side, it is actually bringing up some really quite warm weather into eastern parts of Europe, but uh, we're not going to be influenced by that. We've got these cold east to north east winds coming down across the country, and of course, the weather fronts. Uh, we've got a warm front and a cold front. They're going to be producing a lot of heavy rain uh, as well. And as we go through into uh, Monday itself, it's fact chart for midday on uh, Monday. We find that that low pressure is centre just off the southeast of England and East Anglia. There's the weather front. We've got two of them bringing uh, probably a lot of uh, wet weather indeed into the east of the southeast. The warm front and the cold front have that actually occluded out. So we've now got an occluded front that will be bringing very heavy rain into the southeast. And not just rain, there may actually be, with a little bit of adaptive cooling and one or two other things thrown into the mix, there may just be the potential for a little bit of sleet or snow with that on the final day of April, uh, can you believe? So, have a look at some uh, modelling, starting off with the GFS. Now, you'll remember that yesterday the GFS was shoving this low pressure over to Germany. Uh, so it looked like the GFS yesterday was definitely trending to drier conditions for money. But I did say that it was subject to change and that low pressure's position was chopping and changing from run to run. The GFS actually moved that low pressure back towards our side of uh, Europe now. So this is a precipitation forecast from the GFS from the weatheroutlook.com for midday for uh, just gone uh, with heavy rain across England and Wales, of course, through the afternoon. That rain continues across much of central and southeastern Britain. Gradually it starts to move over towards the North Sea by nine o'clock. And as we get through to uh, midnight and beyond that, the first pulse of rain 
It's cleared away to south east. This is leaving a lot of cloud and damp weather, you'll notice, across eastern parts of the country. So 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, we've still got damp weather here coming in off the North Sea and down through the Midlands, central southeast parts of the country as well. And then in the afternoon, where well, we keep showery bursts of rain going in the east, and heavy, these are heavy showers that are developing out in the west. So in the west tomorrow, we're going to have some big showers, west of Scotland, Wales, southwest England, possibly parts of uh, Northern Ireland as well. Further east, it'll be cloudier and damper with like uh, sort of light drizzly rain coming and going. Uh, much of that dies out overnight Saturday to Sunday. I mean, Sunday actually looks mostly dry day uh, for most of us. I think Sunday will be the best day out of the weekend. But by three o'clock in the afternoon, look, our first pulse of very wet weather is beginning to uh, get into the very far southeastern part of the country. And then that gets a little bit more widespread overnight, Sunday to Monday, across the southeast. So really wet across East Anglia, parts of southeastern England at midnight on Monday, on Sunday to Monday. And then that heavy area of rain expands as we go through the early hours of uh, money becoming torrential when you see these yellow colors turning up there that, that's telling you it's torrential rain but we've got uh, down in the southeast early on monday morning and it is turning a little bit to sleet or snow here across parts of uh, northern england as well and then that rain just keeps pouring through the course of money. We're looking, if this is right, we're looking at widely an inch or more of rain. So whilst there is a potential for a little bit of seed to snow, I think the main issue for most of us on Monday will probably be over an inch of rain falling. It'll be a very wet day. Uh, turning to snow across parts of the North Midlands and up the Pennines, you'll notice, also over North Wales as well. Uh, so just really thoroughly wet through the course of Monday uh, with snow over high ground on the northern and western edge. That rain is still clinging on across many eastern parts of the country through into Tuesday. But through the course of Tuesday, it does gradually move away, but more rain is lurking to the northwest. That was the uh, GFS model. Let's have a look at the high resolution Arpege model, if it's going to update. There we go. So uh, we're going to start off again at five o'clock in the evening on uh, Sunday. So we've got quite wet weather coming into the southeast at that point. And then the rain gets heavier and more widespread through into Monday morning. So some really wet weather here across much of the Midlands, southern, southeast Britain. Notice the snow risk with this is much further south. It's actually more towards southern central summit counties of England, interestingly. So uh, it's a lot further south. Would again mainly be restricted to high ground, um, but a few flakes possible at lower levels too. The main issue I would have thought is just the persistence and the heaviness of the rain, which just goes on and on, pouring away across much of the country through the course of, uh, through the course of Monday. Uh, we get through to the DWD icon, uh, model next. It looks like all these tabs are going to be refreshing as we go along, so that's rather uh, annoying. So uh, again, we start off at midday on uh, Sunday, uh, and we see that a little bit of rain getting into the far southeast at that point through the course of Sunday night. That rain gets more widespread. It's a little bit further southeast with the rain. Uh, the icon model for Monday, so it's more for East Anglia, southeast parts of the country, not getting as far north as some of those other models are doing. Much less of a wintry uh, mix as well uh, with that one. Uh, but again, we do keep that rain going in the far southeast through much of uh, Monday. And then, of course, got the ECMWF model. So uh, this was sh uh, shared to me uh, on Twitter by a good friend, Quantum. Quantum, of course, we do the live uh, events, uh, live chats with Quantum. Uh, this is uh, the precipitation forecast from the ECMWF model. Uh, and it's for 9 o'clock in the morning on Monday. So the blue area is where it's raining, but this sort of the yellow area is where we've got rain or snow. So we've got kind of like a wintry mix in that area. You see, it's quite widespread across many parts of the Midlands and down into some southwestern parts of the country uh, through the course of uh, many morning. That's 9 o'clock in the morning on Monday with a mix of rain or snow. Uh, quite widely across many parts of the country. It's much further north than it was on the DWD icon as well. It's through the Midlands. The icon model never gets that rain 
up to uh, the Midlands. Uh, and the visible precipitation uh, snow depth forecast from the ECMWF model from weather. Dot us. Uh, now, this does overdo the snow depth a little bit, but it gives you an idea of where the model thinks there could be some snowflakes falling. It assumes that every snowflake that falls settles, so that's how it overdoes things. It does give you an idea of the areas that are at risk of seeing some uh, snow. So, uh, this is kind of like the end of, uh, end of Sunday and going into Monday. And uh, it'll just be pouring with rain across the far southeast by that point. But it's going to the early hours of morning. Notice this blue area getting more widespread across the south and the southeast. That's where the model is predicting snow to be laying through the course of Monday. So we get through to Monday morning. Actually, I've got quite deep snow being forecast to be laying here across many parts of the Midlands, particularly the south and the east winds and going down into central southern England. Now, it is almost certainly very substantially overdoing the, uh, the snow lying. Uh, it's very unlikely that we would see that kind of depth of snow lying uh, on Monday. But it is the idea that that's the rough area where the model is predicting uh, snow to be falling, along with rain as well. Uh, of course. And you see it's roughly in the same sort of position that we have here uh, on this chart uh, with rain over towards uh, the east. So very little snow lying across East Anglia and very far southeast of England. But come through the Midlands into central, southern, southwestern England. And that's where the model is predicting uh, snow to be falling. So a mix of rain or snow in uh, that area. The model wants to have the depths of uh, snow going up to sort of uh, three or four inches across the southeast, but as I said, that is very overdone. It's really unlikely that we get that depth of snow uh, lying. It's just a suggestion that there could well be snowflakes falling as we go through the course of Monday. The model is assuming that all of those snowflakes will settle, which isn't going to happen on the final day of uh, April. But uh, yeah, it could be one to watch this on uh, on uh, Monday because I'm going to be very, very wet. Or it will be very wet across many parts of uh, central, southern, southeast of Britain. And there might be some snow in the air as well on the last day of April. Now, beyond that, as I've been uh, saying, it looks like weather's picking up as we head towards the bank holiday weekend. So we've got the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles next. We're looking at Milton Keynes today. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Milton Keynes. And uh, starting off close to average today, but we have got a falling temperature taking place through the weekend into the start of next week. So again, very, very close to minus 5 and 850 HPA on Monday. That's one of the reasons the atmosphere could be cold enough to support some snow with that torrential rain uh, and gale force east to northeasterly wind on uh, Monday. Now, beyond that, very quickly, the temperature starts to recover. So through the middle of next week, that's this period just here, temperatures are going back towards average. And by the bank holiday weekend, look at that, we've got above the red line. We've got above the 30-year temperature average. So becoming significantly warmer as we go into the bank holiday weekend, if that is correct. Also, a little bit of a trying trend appearing now as well. So this is today's rainfall when I started off the video with those precipitation spikes just there. Uh, Monday's torrential rain. But beyond that, it looks like we have got a drying trend uh, showing up here through this first week of May. And possibly going into the second week of May as well. Yes, there are precipitation spikes in that period. But it does look uh, quite a lot drier, really. Uh, compared to uh, what we have had over the past few days. Surface temperatures also reflecting this change. So this is 10 degrees just here. This is freezing down there. That's plus 20 degrees up there. Starting off around a little bit under 10 degrees at Milton Keynes today and keeping up that sort of level into the weekend or free weekend. That's a dip in the temperature that takes place on Monday. So barely above 5 degrees Celsius at Milton Keynes on uh, Monday. Going to be a very, very cold day indeed. But beyond that, the temperature starts to lift up a little bit. It's a bit of a slow process, but there is a warming trend in evidence here. So by the time you get through to bank holiday weekend, looks like we can see the temperatures going at least into the mid to upper teens Celsius. One or two ensemble members are now, they are outliers, but one or two ensemble members are now actually lifting the temperature up to or beyond 
20 degrees over the bank holiday weekend. That is bank holiday money just there, the 7th of May. So a warming trend uh, as we run up towards the uh, bank holiday weekend, but starting from a very cold level at the beginning of uh, next week. Temperature anomalies are looking like that for uh, the weekend, 27th of April to the 5th of May, and we're coming out cold now, which is hardly surprising, uh, hardly surprising with uh, Monday being such a cold and wet day. Precipitation anomalies are interesting. Uh, again, this is from the 27th of April to the 5th of May. Northern parts of the country coming out with a substantially drier than average precipitation anomaly, but down across the southeast of England, uh, we see a very substantially wetter than average precipitation anomaly in the weekend. So you can quite clearly see where the rain is going to be. And all of that, or most of that, is down to what's happening on Monday. So that's how the GFS is looking for Monday. It's a pretty horrendous chart, to say the least. We've got this area of low pressure sitting just off the coast of East Anglia. We've got the wind uh, coming down from the northeast. It's a very strong wind as well, tightly packed. Isobar. So we could be seeing gusts of wind up to 50 or 60 miles an hour down the east coast. A gale force east to northeast wind with torrential rain and the chance of some snow uh, and sleet and temperatures barely above four or five degrees widely across England and Wales. And that is on the final day of April. Further north, around this little bit of a ridge. So it will be a little bit drier in the north, but still uh, quite cold. Now we go through next week and we see that uh, weather, uh, that low pressure running up the east coast as we go through to Tuesday. Uh, then on Wednesday, we start bringing the weather in from off the Atlantic. So that'll bring another band of rain in from the west, but at least that's bringing warmer air in from off the Atlantic too. We're getting rid of that uh, east to northeasty wind. Uh, then we go through to the second half of next week and we start to build up this high pressure to our south. The Azores High begins to make its move, so this will be turning England and Wales drier and warmer in the second half of next week. Still looks a little bit unsettled and changeable up in the north, but by the time we go through to the bank holiday weekend, it's a slow old process, but we are building up these heights to the south. So by Monday, we're almost virtually under a ridge of high pressure, which should give us uh, a spell of drier and warmer conditions uh, over the Bank Holiday weekend and up to Bank Holiday Monday. Might not last all that long as we go into the second week of May. Signs of that uh, these cooler westerly winds are coming back again with the wind turning uh, to the northwest and probably bringing more showers down. So it probably doesn't last all that long. But um, it is a little bit better uh, for a time anyway around the bank holiday weekend. Uh, finally, the East UF looks like that. So there's a low pressure on Tuesday. Not quite as, um, uh, as deep, this low pressure. Uh, so not quite the gale force winds. Uh, uh, but, of course, because it's uh, not as windy, that allows for more uh, sort of evaporative cooling because the air is uh, quite, uh, the winds are quite light. So with a torrential rain, it allows for more evaporative cooling to take place. And that's the reason the ECMUF is seeing a greater snow risk compared to the GFS. The GFS is very wet. They're both very wet. Both indicate torrential rain. Uh, around Monday for the southeast, but the difference is that the GFS is very windy. The isobars are tightly packed. There's a strong wind, and that allows uh, for the temperature. Or be, we won't really feel that temperature holding up, but it does allow for temperature to hold up slightly better. Whereas the ECM, the uh, winds are lighter. The rain is still uh, just as heavy, it's still just as torrential, but because the winds are lighter, it allows the adaptive cooling to cool the air down that little bit more. And so that's a reason the ECNDF is seeing a greater snow risk uh, on Monday. Finally, we get rid of that low pressure to go through, of course, next week and turn the winds in to the west. So that will still keep it quite unsettled up to the middle of next week, especially so for the north. But because the winds are coming off the Atlantic as opposed to uh, coming from northern Scandinavia, it will be turning milder through the course of that next week. And then at the end of next week, into Bank Holiday Weekend, there comes the build of pressure from the Azores High. So as we go into a Bank Holiday Weekend, that high pressure increasingly takes over. And we'll look at that, but I don't get through to Monday the 7th of May. The winds are coming in from a southeasterly direction. And to be honest, that looks like proper sort of summer type weather. Look at the upper air temperatures going up to plus 10 degrees Celsius. That, if it comes off, would be lifting temperatures above 20 degrees. So, I mean, it's all going on. We're talking about torrential rain and snow and also the chance of summer temperatures as well. It's been a very, very strange 
uh, spring this and it looks like this very odd weather is continuing into May also. So, uh, I mean, more um, in the more reliable time frame, we're definitely looking out for the chance of torrential rain uh, and a risk of some sleet or wet snow as well on Monday in a particularly cold and dismally wet and miserable day. But by the bank holiday weekend, it could be all changed again and we could be back off and running into almost summer-like weather. So a lot to keep an eye on, a lot to keep us on our toes. And uh, we're going to keep you updated, of course, over the next few days at Gals Webbies on all of this. So tomorrow we'll have a weekend forecast. And we're also going to have a seasonal model roundup for the uh, summer of 2018 coming up tomorrow. That'll be the first video that's with you tomorrow morning. You're going to get something like 10 long race models together and see what they're all showing uh, for the summer. But as well as that, we'll have a weekend forecast, which will be another very interesting weekend forecast. I think we're guaranteed uh, that much at least. Um, so come back for all that tomorrow. But before then, tonight around 7 o'clock, we will have our, uh, I think it's a fourth update for the May Day Bank Holiday Weekend. And if these uh, decent looking charts continue uh, for uh, tonight's model runs, it could well be that uh, this fourth May Day Bank Holiday Weekend update is going to be a pretty good one. So come back for that around uh, 7 o'clock. But that's all for now. And thanks for watching.